Welcome to St. Elizabeth St. Bridget's Parish on the first Sunday of Advent. The second collection today is for Christmas flowers. Our Mass this evening is being offered for the deceased members of the Monaco family and for Edward Kolofsky. The Mass readings and prayers can be found on page 45 in the Missalette. Please silence all cell phones. Our entrance in can be found in the Gather Books, number 317, O Come, O Come, Emmanuel, number 317. Please rise. of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and a communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us prepare, my brothers and sisters, to celebrate these sacred mysteries by asking the Lord for his pardon and for his peace. You come to heal the contrite of heart, Lord have mercy. You have come to break the sins, the chains of sin, and, and the shackles of death. Christ, have mercy. You are the way, the truth, and the life. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. Grant your faithful, we pray, almighty God, the resolve to run forth to meet your Christ with righteous deeds at his coming, so that gathered at his right hand, they may be worthy to possess the heavenly kingdom through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. reading from the book of the prophet Jeremiah. The days are coming, says the Lord, when I will fulfill the promise I made to the house of Israel and Judah. In those days, in that time, I will raise up for David a just shoot. He shall do what is right and just in the land. In those days, Judah shall be safe and Jerusalem shall dwell secure. 
This is what they shall call her, the Lord our justice, the word of the Lord. The responsorial psalm can be found in the gather books, number 36. Gently leading the poor and the humble to you, o Lord, I love my soul. To you, I lift my soul to the ones who see. show them mercy to you who Lord I loved my soul to you I loved my A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Thessalonians. Brothers and sisters, may the Lord make you increase and abound in love for one another and for all, just as we have for you, so as to strengthen your hearts to be blameless in holiness before our God and Father. At the coming of our Lord Jesus with all his holy ones, Amen. Finally, brothers and sisters, we earnestly ask and exhort you in the Lord Jesus that as you receive from us how you should conduct yourselves to please God and as you are conducting yourselves, you do so even more. For you know what instructions we gave you through the Lord Jesus. The word of the Lord. Show us your 
grant us your salvation. Alleluia, 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 alleluia. The Lord be with you. In reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Luke. Jesus said to his disciples, There will be signs in the sun, the moon, and the stars, and on earth nations will be in dismay, perplexed by the roaring of the sea and the waves. People will die of fright in anticipation of what is coming upon the world, for the powers of heaven will be shaken, and they will see the Son of Man coming in a cloud with power and great glory. But when these signs begin to happen, stand erect, raise your heads, because your redemption is at hand. Beware that your hearts do not become drowsy from carousing or drunkenness or the anxiety of daily life, and the day catch you by surprise like a trap. For that day will assist everyone who lives on the face of the earth. Be vigilant at all times and pray that you have the strength to escape the tribulations that are intimate and to stand before the Son of Man. The Gospel of the Lord. So you might have noticed there are a few different things at Holy Mass tonight. The first thing that you probably noticed was that the Gloria is not sung. How many people noticed that? Good. All right. And the reason why the Gloria is not sung is because during Advent and Lent, but during these particular seasons, the church asks us not to sing the Gloria. Lent is, we know, a time of, well, reparation, fasting, and almsgiving. And it is a penitential season, whereas Advent is a time of anticipation, waiting, joyful waiting. And so during these particular liturgical seasons, we know that the glory is not sung, and the priests wear these color vestments. Also true tradition for a long-standing time, an Advent wreath is ignited, and there are four candles to symbolize the four weeks of Advent before we come to Christmas. So what is Advent all about? It's about waiting and anticipating. We all wait. We wait for a plane to arrive. We wait to get on the plane. We wait on the lines of the grocery store. We wait online for everything, don't we? How do you like waiting? Right, exactly. None of us like to wait. And the reason why is because we are anticipating going to where we must go. How about on Christmas morning when you were a little child? Could you wait for Santa Claus to come? Very difficult to do that. Still do. You still do. <laughs> That's because you're a child at heart, Father. Hell yeah. <laughs> so this season of anticipation really helps us to examine what we are waiting for. What are we waiting for? The greatest of all. The greatest of all occurrences in the life of humanity. God becoming man like one of us. So what is Advent all about? Advent helps us to look forward to that celebration to the season of Christ's birth. Primarily by anticipating. Do you not find yourselves in a frenzy during this time after Thanksgiving, decorating your homes, going online to buy presents? But we should be at a frenzy of anticipation of what the Lord is doing for us. Often enough, whenever we come to the Eucharist, we consider it just matter of fact. But Christ came as a child, but he comes to us now in the Eucharist. 
And so not that we should be at a frenzy, but we should anticipate him and worthily receive him in Holy Communion. In the readings today, what do we hear about another anticipation? We long for the second coming of Christ, and when will that occur? At the end of time as we know it, when God will come in Christ Jesus with all the power of all those angels and saints and the glory of the life of the world to come. That's what we anticipate. But of that time and that moment, we do not know. And while Christ approaches these particular questions in sacred scripture today from Luke's gospel, it helps us to understand to stand erect and be ready and not find ourselves in carousing, but rather being prepared for the coming of the Lord. The Lord could come to us in any moment of our lives in so many different ways. First of all, he comes to us in the Eucharist, but then ultimately he will come to us when we will go before the Lord for the final judgment of ourselves, where we will have to give a rendition or an accounting of what we have done, whether good or evil. And that should help us to stand erect and to face what we will anticipate, the life of the world to come. Perhaps that's why St. Paul exhorts and begs and tells us earnestly, brothers and sisters, you should conduct yourselves to please the Lord God. And in conducting yourselves, you must always grow in the instructions of the ways of the Lord. And so we come to the Eucharist, where we learn the instructions of the ways of the Lord, always teaching us how to live a good and virtuous life. Sometimes, whenever we hear that term, good and virtuous life, it helps us to understand that the Holy Spirit gives us all the necessary things we need to make us good and virtuous. One of those things are this. By becoming filled with God and becoming better prayers and living lives of virtues. What is virtues? Virtues are very simple. They're really beautiful. Virtues are known as the carnal virtues or the moral virtues. While they may be natural virtues, imbued with the Holy Spirit because of your respective sacraments of baptism and confirmation, the Holy Spirit descends upon you in a different way. And these natural virtues can give us what we would call temperance temperance that is to steady the cause courage to speak with the boldness that as Catholics we ought to speak especially in the plight of the distress of the unborn or those who are experiencing so many different hardships in the world today courage and then there's a sense of justice. Every good Catholic always wants to have justice done. But justice must be begin with ourselves. And that virtue of justice is this. Are you and I acting in a just and a virtuous way? It takes just one of us to act justly. And then, as Mother Teresa tells us, such as a smile is contagious, others will smile. And if you and I walk in the ways of justice, then perhaps by example we can lead each other into justice. Prudence. Often enough this is something that when people hear about prudence they think of the word prude. It has nothing to do with being prude. Prudence rather is to know when to speak, when not to speak, and to use right judgment when you are talking. So what does prudence do? It helps us to remain silent. What does prudence do? It helps us to speak. What does prudence teach us? In a word, it teaches us 
never to speak ill of one another or to gossip. What does prudence teach us? It helps us to understand one singular thing, that every word out of our mouths, although it might be impossible for human beings, might be words that will encourage and give life to others. And that's what a prudent heart does. When they are picked up by the Holy Spirit, they become supernatural. So during this time of Advent, maybe we ought to ask the Lord for a better understanding of these carnal virtues. And don't forget about the theological virtues. What's the theological virtues? Very, very simple. You feel you're back in Catechism 101? What are they? Faith, hope, and love. And often enough, love is translated as in charity. The theological virtue of faith helps us understand that our faith ought never to be taken for granted. And so sometimes it is very difficult to do that. But I often want to encourage you never to take your faith for granted, and you should always be commended. You're here. You're present. Because your faith compels you to be here. Feed your faith with the Eucharist and with the sacrament of reconciliation. Feed your faith, and you will come to understand the next theological virtue of hope. It's a different type of hope. I hope to win the lottery, don't you? But you know the expression, you've got to buy a ticket first. But here's the point of the theological virtue of hope. Hope can be this, that nothing will ever separate you from the love of God except for one thing, sin. And it is sin who will separate us. But we have the power to be saved from our sins, and that's the theological virtue of hope. Hope and understanding that what we do with the Eucharist becomes for us a source of strength and a spiritual edifice growing within us that will lead others to Christ. That's why the profound vocation of a mother and a father to teach their children in these theological virtues are so very, very important. And finally, charity. What kind of charity? Love. What kind of love? Love of laying down one's life for one's friends, for sure, as Christ laid down his life for us. But charity and understanding that what we do must always be done in the greatest of all signs, and that is the sign of the greatest act of love. It is this sign, as simple as it may seem. It is Christ who has loved us first to lead us into the ways of everlasting life. You see, my friends, our lives are fleeting. And our lives pass before us. But our lives can become something beautiful, not only for one another, but to be beautiful for the love of God. I dare say that's what sacred scripture challenges each of us to do. To transform ourselves and make our lives something inacceptable. The acceptable sacrifice that is not only beautiful to the one who gives us the beatific vision, but to the one who allows us to see the beautiful vision of him face to face. Advent, a time of joyful expectation, of waiting and hungering for the coming of the Lord at Christmas. 
But he has already come. He will come again. You see, my friends, he is here now in our midst. We no longer need to wait. I believe the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made for us and for our salvation came down from heaven. believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins and the life of the world to come. As we enter this holy season of Advent, we prepare our hearts to receive the Messiah. And so with joyful hope, let us offer our prayers to the Lord our God. Thank you. Thank you. For an increase in religious vocations, may the Lord bless those discerning priesthood or consecrated life with generous and open hearts. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For a world that will raise up servants who protect the vulnerable, especially the aged and the unborn, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who struggle with questions about their faith, may the power of God's grace bring them peace and understanding. We pray to the Lord. For faith community of St. Elizabeth, St. Bridget's, may the Holy Spirit help us increase and abound in love for one another as children of our Heavenly Father. We pray to the Lord. For those who have died in Christ, may they live in glory forever with God and all the saints, including Carmela Staricki, Kimberly Wilde, and those lives lost during the Christmas parade in Wisconsin. And at this Mass, we remember the deceased members of the Monaco family and Edward Kolofsky, and the prayers we hold in the silence of our hearts. We pray to the Lord. Loving God. Father of us all, we beg you to hear and answer our prayers this day, for we ask this in courage, in the name of Christ Jesus, our Lord. Amen. Please join us singing our offertory hymn, number 339, Each Winter as the Year Grows Older, number 339. Each winter as the year grows older, we each grow older too. The chill sets in a little colder, the very things we knew seem shaken and untrue. 
When race and class cry out for treason, when sirens call for war, the over shout the voice of reason and scream till we ignore all we held dear before. Yet I believe beyond believing that life can spring from death, that growth can flower from our grieving, that we can catch our breath and turn transfixed by faith. So even as the sun is turning to journey to the north, the living flame in secret burning can kindle on the earth and bring God's love to birth. O child of ecstasy and sorrows, O prince of peace and pain, brighten today's world by tomorrow's, renew our lives again, Lord Jesus, come and reign. Wash away my iniquity and cleanse me from the blood of your Son. My sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, our Almighty Father. Except we pray, O Lord, these offerings we make, gathered from among your gifts to us, and may what you grant us celebrate devoutly here below gain for us the prize of eternal redemption through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. With Lift up your hearts. Your Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, right it is truly right and just. It is our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For he assumed that his first coming the lowliness of human flesh and so fulfilled the design you formed long ago and opened for us the way to eternal salvation, that when he comes again in glory and majesty and all at last is made manifest, we who watch for that day may inherit the great promise in which we now dare to hope. And so with all the angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, with all the hosts and the powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of glory and without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord God of all, heaven and earth are full of your glory, the sun are in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, the sun are in you are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall that they may become for us the body and the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took the bread, said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you.
in a similar way. And when supper was ended, he took the chalice. And once more giving thanks, he gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation. The bread, the giving God giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and to minister to you. We humbly pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, that we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, James, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your faith. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Saint Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles, and with all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. The Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, that will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may always be free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom and the power and the glory are yours now and ever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your holy will, to live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace.
sins of the world have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world of mercy. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Communion hymn is number 323 in the gather books. Number 323. Come, O long expected Jesus.
Let us pray. May these sacred mysteries, O Lord, in which we have participated, profit us, we pray. For even now, as we walk amid passing things, you teach us by them to love the things of heaven and to hold fast to that what endures through Christ our Lord. Let us prepare to celebrate the birth of our Lord as we enter Advent and prepare for Christmas. Join us for adoration on December the 8th, December the 18th, and December the 22nd. Please see the bulletin for details. Also, please join us for the Sounds of Christmas on Sunday, December the 12th at 3 p.m. Again, see the bulletin for details. Next weekend, the Knights of Columbus will be collecting food and monetary donations. And please take home a copy of the bulletin along with the Catholic spirit. Thank you. Thank you very much for reading, Jim. Thank you, Vera, for helping out. And across to Henry and Ian, in the back, Henry for serving, and in the back, videoing this to our leaders of songs up there in the choir loft, and across to our wonderful hushes. Those do a great job. And just the idea of the Christmas concert should be wonderful, you know, so consider coming to it. It's on December 12th. It should be very, very enjoyable. So um, please RSVP so we know how much uh, pierogies we have to make afterwards. The Lord be with you. We're not going to make pierogies, don't worry. <laughs> May the blessings of mighty God descend upon you and remain with you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. Please join in singing our recessional hymn, number 318, People Look East, number 318. People look east, the time is near of the crowning of the year. Make your house fair as you are able. Trim the hearth 
and search the table people are keys and sing today love the guest is on the way pearls be glad the earth is fair one more seed is planted there give up your strength the seed to nourish that in course the flower may flourish people are keys and sing today love the roses on